Hi friends, I'm back with the start of chapter 7 of Socks, which is actually our last chapter. I can't believe we're almost to the end, so I'm going to start the chapter today, and then we'll be finishing up the book tomorrow. Chapter 7 is called Socks and Charles William. Socks soon discovered, once his bed and dish had been returned to their old place in the laundry, that being inside the house with Charles William was quite different from watching him through the window. Charles William had outgrown his morning nap, and whenever Socks was in the room, he no longer was content to stay in his pen playing with brown bear, or with his plastic-filled ball full of sloshing plastic fish. The minute his mother set him down inside the pen, he began to fuss. If his mother ignored his fussing, he clung to the bars and howled. His playpen bored him, and he wanted out. If the cat was out, he should be out too. All this howling and shaking of wooden bars worried Socks, who sat beside the playpen like a sphinx, with his paws flat in front, staring at the only human being he knew who was anywhere near his own size. The louder Charles William cried, the more uneasy Socks became until finally he ran meowing to Mrs. Bricker to tell her that she must do something to stop the crying. Mrs. Bricker always relented. All right, you two, she said as she lifted her own son out of the pen and set him on the carpet. You win. She was careful never to have socks and the baby alone when Charles William was out of the playpen. Charles William was into everything. He tried to chew the lamp cord until his mother came running in to pry it out of his fingers and to unplug the lamp. He crawled into the laundry and threw Socks' dry food all over the floor. Mrs. Bricker started serving Socks' meals on top of the clothes dryer. Charles William pulled magazines off the coffee table with a slam that woke Socks with a start. He cried when his mother would not let him taste the dead moths he found. He sat in his high chair yelling, Oi, doi, doi, into his cup, because he could make more noise that way. He stuffed his mouth with cottage cheese and blew it all over the kitchen for his mother to wipe up. He pulled pans out of the cupboards and banged them on the floor. A sound most disturbing to a cat's sensitive ears. When given an educational toy, three wooden rings to fit on a peg, he threw away the rings, grabbed the peg as if it were a tomahawk, and pounded the floor with it. Most of all, Charles William delighted in crawling after Socks. Ticky, he said hopefully. Ticky. Socks came to accept his new name from the baby. Let the brickers call him Ticky, and all they earned was a look of contempt. Pet the kitty gently, said Mrs. Bricker, when Charles William reached for Socks's tail. Socks learned to put up with Charles William, and, when necessary, to escape under the dining room table, where he was fenced in by chair legs. See, the kitty's tired, said Mrs. Bricker to Charles William, when Socks would, fl would flee to safety. And there is Socks under the table, trying to hard hide from Charles William. Actually, Mrs. Bricker was the one who was tired. Charles William was not only an active baby, he was growing heavier in lifting him in and out of the high chair or onto the table in his room where his diapers were changed was tiring to his mother. In the afternoon, after she put Charles William down in his crib with his bottle and brown bear for his nap, Mrs. Bricker kicked off her sandals and fell asleep on the couch in the living room. There was nothing Socks enjoyed so much as a warm body to lean against while he washed, but as soon as he settled himself against Mrs. Bricker and was grooming himself with long, hard licks, pausing to chew the rough spots, she pushed him to the floor. Socks, please, she said. Be a good cat. In a moment, Socks was back against the exhausted mother, licking, chewing, and occasionally scratching until his fur was sleek and his paws snowy white. Mrs. Bricker, who knew when she was defeated and was too tired to protest, 
slept, and after a few minutes of and after a few minutes of vibrant purring, so did Socks. One afternoon, when Mrs. Bricker had put Charles William in his crib for his nap, Socks jumped down from the top of the clothes dryer, where he had been crunching dry cat food. He was passing the baby's room on his way to join Mrs. Bricker on the couch as Charles William heaved his bottle out of the crib. The top, which had managed to twist, came off, and the sight of milk spilling across the floor caught Socks' attention. Socks went to investigate, and although the milk was ordinary milk and not the formula he had once enjoyed, he crouched and lapped while Charles William watched. When Socks had finished and was tidying his whiskers, Charles William got on his hands and knees and began to rock in his crib as if he wanted to show what he could do. The crib began to move. Charles William rocked harder. The crib slid across the bare floor to the door, which Charles William was able to reach out and push shut, an accomplishment that pleased him. He rocked some more past the door until the crib touched the wall and barred against the door. Socks looked up at Charles William and meowed. How was he going to get out with the door shut? Charles William was delighted to have the cat speak to him personally. This was something new. Socks meowed again. He did not want to be shut in the bedroom when he was supposed to be napping in the living room. Charles William wanted to amuse the cat. He worked at a crack in the plastic covered crib bumper, tearing at it until he pulled out a tuft of cotton which he threw out between the bars of his crib. With alert eyes, Socks watched the fluff floating toward the floor. A second fluff followed, and a third. Socks leaped to clap it between his paws as if it were a butterfly. The baby chortled and tossed out a bigger piece of cotton. Socks leaped for that, leaped for that one. It dropped and batted it across the floor. Now the crack in the plastic was big enough so that Charles William could get both his small hands into it. He pulled out gob after gob of cotton for the cat's amusement. Socks leaped and pounced and raced in a wild ballet, skidding through what was left of the milk, rolling over the cotton with his paws, while Charles William laughed and pulled out more cotton. Socks leaped for that, pleased to play with the fluffy stuff pleased to entertain an admiring audience. Faster and faster, Socks raced and leaped. Charles William screamed with laughter. Socks heard the padding sound of Mrs. Bricker hurrying down the hall in her bare feet. He paid no attention. Charles William was silent when he heard the doorknob turn and Socks paused to pant. Mrs. Bricker tried to open the door, but she could not because the crib w was wedged in the corner. Oh, she cried and rattled the door. Charles William, are you all right? She asked as if she expected him to answer. Then, after a pause, she added, Socks, are you in there? Charles William's attention returned to the torn corner of the crib bumper. On with the game, handfuls of cotton snowed down from the crib. For Socks and Charles William laughed harder than ever. The door rattled again. Charles William, what are you doing? Mrs. Bricker's voice was frightened by the laughter. His mother could not get in. Charles William found this development so funny that he laughed even harder. He stuck out his tongue and blew. He found his noise hilarious. And we're going to stop there for today. So, Charles William and Socks have shut themselves into the room with the crib against the door so Mrs. Bricker cannot get in. So it'll be interesting to see how this chapter and the book ends tomorrow. So I hope you're enjoying friends. I hope your week is off to a great start and I'll be back again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.